The Primordial Tyrant's Taurosaurus is now available in Path of Titans, and wow, I just got a leaf jump scare right there. But of course, this is a brand new mod released alongside the Apatosaurus mod. I'm sure many of you already know and love this mod and were very excited for this one. A very vibrant, a very aggressive, very awesome dinosaur. Very powerful as well. Here it is, Taurosaurus Tanneri. Here is the male, of course, on the standard skin, and here is the female. The coloration goes darker rather than duller. Um, then you get Tanneri Variation 1, you get Tanneri Variation 2, which is stocky. You get Slim Build, and now it's doing an aggro call. What an angry boy right there. That's the Slim Build. Then you get larger crests, exposed teeth, of course head variant so the main difference here if we go backwards like it's the back of the neck and the head crests that get a bit more pronounced back of the head definitely gets more pronounced then you go back to standard best way to have a look at that comparison is right here the main changes on the head but obviously none of these will change it statistically but let's go ahead and showcase this thing in game so here we have the baby Torvosaurus, and i got to say, this thing looks great as a baby, of course. I mean, Primordial Tyrants are never going to skimper on their mods. They're always going to look great. It comes with a standard bite attack as well, of course, and you want to test out, see it on the Iguanodon. Now, when we showcase the Apatosaurus, that thing done a monstrous amount of damage with its tail attack when it was a baby. This thing does not. But it does look like it's getting a stack ability, so maybe it does more damage when that's fully stacked i don't know is it doing more damage when it's fully stacked i don't think it is that being said that is the bite attack there The Torvosaurus comes with a lot of abilities, as I say, with every dinosaur, but if you compare this to the Apatosaurus, you have less abilities that you can equip and less abilities overall. This is more in line with official dinosaurs in terms of the maximum amount of abilities being more like five on the upper end for official dinosaurs. So let's go ahead and check these out. You get some passives. You get acceleration, which is plus 25% acceleration speed, damage, which is plus 3% attack damage, knockback, which is plus 15% attack knockback. Back. Of course, then you go to your head slot. You get bite, which is a medium damage bite, successive bites stack damage, competitive strike, a bite attack that decreases speed of the target, and shatter point, which is a low damage bite. When biting a prime target, the bite deals extra damage. Splintering bite is a low damage bite that gives the primed debuff. So realistically, you want splintering bite and shatter point together as two separate attacks or to combo. For your senses, you get Berserker, which is a standard ability, of course. When you are low on health, your cooldowns are 25% faster and deal 10% more damage. Then you get Headhunter, which is the nearest creature outside of the group, takes increased damage on headshot. Up next is Shove, which is a lunge forward, knocking back enemies. Then you go to Metabolism. You've got Sugar Tooth, which allows you to eat fruits and roots in addition to meat. Those food and water drain by 25%. After that, you get Hyper Carnivore and Scavenger, which are both base game abilities. Then you get your Hide. You get Resilient Scales, which is standard. Standard hide as well, Glancing Scales which reduces knockback received by 50% and Slick Scales which is another standard one. Up next you get your legs, you get braced legs and you get long distance runner as well which are both standard base game abilities. Then you go to your tail, you get balance tail, armored tail which are both base game and then you get a tail attack as well that causes light damage. All base game stuff, pretty much. Then finally for your call, you get Rallying Call, which is a surge of energy, replenishes 25% uh, 25 stamina, not 25% of your stamina, 25 stamina. And we'll showcase that off in a moment. Okay. 
Now let's go ahead and showcase these attacks on our very unfortunate Iguanodon right here. We're going to do body shots as always. And this is obviously always our baseline. So your standard bite attack. That is followed by the, I think it's the heavy bite or whatever. The one that inflicts uh, speed production, right? Which does a lot less damage, but of course it locks the cooldowns. Yet a six second cooldown or seven on both of your bite attacks. Although the best bite attack is that standard bite attack. Now I do want to say the standard bite attack does stack. So when you're looking at it on that perspective, it does a lot more when you are fully stacking that attack. And it goes up to a five stack right there. And that's pretty much that. It's very strong at that. Will I kill it here? No. But yeah, you get the idea. The next one is Splintering Bite and Shatter Point. I'll start off with Splintering Bite first because this works with Shatter Point. As you can see, it does very little damage. You get a 5, 6, 7 second cooldown roughly. Then you do Shatter Point as well as the follow up. That should do more damage with a 6 second cooldown, of course. These should balance together, but at the end of the day, I think you're going to be better off doing your standard bite attack and comboing it with the one that reduces your speed. Next, of course, you get your headbutt, which does knockback and very little damage. Then, when you do it again, you get your tail attack here, which does this. Very little damage as well, but of course, it's a standard attack. So, now I want to showcase that stamina call in action. Of course, it doesn't drain your stamina that much. Well, it does actually, but apparently it reduces or regenerates stamina as well. And there you go. You actually do get 25% of your stamina back with that attack. And of course, all that ability call. And that's that. It's not really the biggest one out of the bunch. It doesn't do the most. But yeah, it's one of them. Torvosaurus comes with 16 skins. That's four more than the Apatosaurus mod, so here they all are. You've got the standard one with its variations there. You've got Badlands, my favourite skin so far. You can guess why. I'm sure many people know why by now. I'm sure most of you who watch these mod showcases and get to this point know what my favourite skins are. Next one is Tropical. Then we go Albino. Then we go Melanistic. Angled, and I'm also sure you're not here for me yapping. We've got Tigris up next. You're here to see the skins, of course. Then you've got Jaeger. I love this skin. I love the red on the body. That is such a pretty skin. Oh, then you get Filigree, a very nice skin. Georgia, I love the oranges there, contrasting nicely with the blues. Clouded, which is Gorgeous. I love the pattern on it. These patterns are really, really nice. I really like default one there. Then you get Veninum. Followed by Molten. Another very pretty skin. Oranges, reds, blacks and whites. And a uh, slight pinky, rosy colour. Then you get Canyon. Another very nice skin overall. Followed by Society. And then Taliqua which is gorgeous very similar to georgia but it's more different pattern variation of course and that's all the skins so that is the primordial tyrant's torvosaurus this thing is absolutely awesome i love this thing a bunch i think it's a great addition to the game it's going to sit nicely as a free slot in between that of that's what source allosaurus and all that's going to sit nicely there of course, let me know your thoughts about this one in the comments down below. Do you think it's good? Do you not? What do you like about it? What do you not like about it? Of course, I love the model. I love the model offers. I think they do a fantastic job. So, yeah, I hope you enjoyed. 
I'll see you all in the next one. Have a great day. Peace.